invited two congressional experts to answer those questions. Republican Pete King of New York, a member of the Homeland Security Committee. And from California, Adam Schiff, the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. Gentlemen, I want to take you back to what President Obama said about hacking in February. Here he is. The cyber world is, is sort of the wild, wild west. And to some degree, we we're asked to be the sheriff. But three months before that, the inspector general at OPM, the agency that was hacked, warned that that agency's computer system was a hacker's dream, which raises the question, Congressman King, did President Obama fail to safeguard his own administration? Christian, we have to get a full F to action report. I don't want to prejudge this, but obviously something went wrong. Obviously, this is a threat that we have to face, and we have to be doing more than we are doing right now. Now, Congress has passed uh, two bills. The House has passed two bills in recent months, which would at least begin to address some of the cybersecurity issues, but more has to be done. I think we have to find a way also to make effective use of all our uh, uh, intelligence and uh, surveillance ap apparatus, even if that involves the NSA, others, because we're talking about nation states here, whether it turns out to be China or not. They're certainly a likely suspect, and we have to, I, I believe, not be afraid to use all of our tools to try to stop this, because it, this, this could be devastating to our country if this got worse. I, I want to pick up on that in a moment, but, but Congressman Schiff, how strong is the evidence that the Chinese were, in fact, behind this? And there are reports that this was not done to try to steal information for identity theft. It wasn't a crime that, in fact, this was an intelligence theft to try to find out who to survey or who to try to recruit as a spy. So how damaging was the information that whoever hacked into OPM that they actually stole? Uh, Chris, it's very valuable information, and while we're not allowed to comment on the attribution yet, we've gotten very good at attribution. It's hard work, but we do it well now. Uh, and there are only two possibilities here with an attack this sophisticated, either a state actor or a group of very sophisticated private hackers who often work in concert with the state and the motivation, as you pointed out, is either going to be fraud in the terms of uh, ripping off people's identity, uh, or if it's a state-sponsored attack, it will be personal information that can be exploited to identify people who might be working in the intelligence community. Uh, it could be used to um, enable other spear phishing attacks. And the real challenge, I think, Chris, is that in this asymmetric battlefield of cyber warfare, those on the offense have all the advantage. It's very expensive to defend. You just need one open door, and you're vulnerable. Uh, and you can often attack with anonymity and be free from repercussions. And I think one of the big things that we really have to do, in addition to our defense, is figure out when we're going to go on offense and how we're going to provide a deterrent to future attacks. Well, I want, I want to pick up on that uh, with you, Congressman King. You kind of hinted at it. Do we need to retaliate against the people that we believe are conducting cyber warfare against us? I, I believe we do. Uh, I don't think we should announce what we're doing, and I think the president and uh, his administration have the capacity to uh, respond. Once they, uh, you know, find out, you know, through the malware signature, who they believe this is, then I, I yeah, there has to be a price to pay for this. Now, uh, how that's done, when it's done, I will leave it to them. Uh, you know, all of us, you know, may have our, uh, our own ideas, but the fact is, nothing should be telegraphed in advance. Nothing should be, uh, you know, given as far as notice. But I think these countries or these uh, terrorist groups should know that there will be consequences when they act this way. We learned this week through another one of Edward Snowden's leaks that President Obama approved the NSA using wire, uh, warrantless surveillance to uh, pick up the international internet traffic of Americans that may be involved in some way in hacking. Uh, Congressman Schiff, you were one of the leaders in the effort to restrict the government's collection of our phone records. Are you okay with this new avenue of collection of information that may involve Americans? Well, I oppose the, the gathering of bulk data by the government uh, because it was really unnecessary for us to hold that data. But in terms of this effort to identify foreign hackers, hackers working for foreign states that are going to come in and steal our secrets, that are going to damage our infrastructure or damage our companies, uh, absolutely we need to gather that intelligence. Uh, it's done under Section 702. It's done with court supervision. Uh, and I think this is uh, fundamentally what the American people expect of their government, and that is that we ought to be aggressively going after identifying and protecting the country from cyber hackers. We do need to make sure, though, Chris, in that process, that if there's any incidental collection, unintended collection of information about Americans, somebody, for example, foreign hacker, 
hacks into American company and steals information, that we follow all the minimization requirements. Uh, and I'm confident that's exactly what we will do and what we have to do. Congressman King, of course, this all comes uh, the same week that Congress voted to reform, not to end, but to reform and to some degree to restrict the government surveillance of uh, bulk data collection of our phone records. And after that vote, in the you put out this tweet, which I'd like to put on the screen. You wrote, today's Senate NSA vote is a victory for America, for freedom over ignorance and defeat for ISIS, Edward Snowden, and Rand Paul. Now, I don't have to tell you, you've gotten a lot of blowback for, to some degree, linking ISIS and Rand Paul. Do you want to take that back? Absolutely not. What Rand Paul did was absolutely disgraceful. Listen, uh, Adam and I uh, can have difference over the NSA. Those reforms, those changes, they were debated, they were worked on. And the fact is that 99% of the uh, Senate wanted the debate to go forward. Rand Paul actually wanted to shut down the NSA for several days, serving no purpose other than to, for him to use it to raise money for his presidential campaign. That went beyond the limits of intelligent debate, of rational debate, and to me, it violated his position as, as a senator. We can have differences, we can debate them, we can work them out, you can vote against NSA if you want to, but to use your one-person power to unilaterally shut it down, knowing that it was going to be reopened in several days. So all he was doing was hurting American security and at the same time asking people to send him contributions. That was shameful and disgraceful. Let's turn, gentlemen, to another security or potential security breach, and that is that we learned this week uh, that at the TSA, uh, investigators inside people from Department of Homeland Security posing as passengers, and you see there on the screen, were able to sneak fake bombs and banned weapons past airport screeners 67 times in 70 attempts. That's a 95% rate of failure. Congressman King, do we need to rethink our screening at airports? And I know it's kind of politically charged, but do we have to consider profiling the most likely suspects? Well, I think we have to consider everything. But let me give Secretary Johnson credit. He moved immediately, and he moved, by the way, before this report was made public. He's also uh, reassigned uh, Frank Taylor, who was in uh, Homeland Security. He's going to temporarily be heading TSA. He's a first-rate administrator. And, and then I would urge the Senate to confirm Admiral Neckinger as soon as possible. But no, I think we have to see whether or not more technology is needed, more training is needed. Obviously, this uh, failure rate is totally, totally unacceptable. As far as profiling, you know, that's a... Uh, uh, one of those hot-button terms. The fact is, we should be, though, trying to narrow it down to those that we think are, are most likely and uh, try to do, to the extent we can, what the Israelis do. But it's much tougher, obviously, in, in our society. But we have to, uh, again, I, th I think be a little more selective, but also we have to make sure that TSA just does a much, much better job uh, profiling, whatever else we want to call it. Uh, the fact is, 95 percent failure rate is wrong. And uh, that, that not just wrong, it's totally unacceptable. Finally, uh, there was the case this week in Boston of Usama Rahim, uh, who was killed by police. They say that he and another man were plotting to behead someone and also to attack Boston police. Uh, Congressman Schiff, as a top Democrat in House Intelligence, how many Americans, if, if, and I, obviously we're talking ballpark here, how many Americans are being radicalized over the Internet by ISIS, and how do we stop these lone wolves? Well, Chris, I think certainly many hundreds are being radicalized. The FBI director acknowledged that we have open investigations in every state in the union. Uh, this is a real problem. Uh, it's a real challenge that the use of social media in such a sophisticated way by ISIS is radicalizing people at home. It's not only drawing recruits to try to get to Syria and Iraq, that's one thing, but also it's uh, stimulating these kind of lone wolf attacks here in the homeland. I will say, though, this uh, on the hierarchy of concerns, my greater concern still is the one that you discussed, and that's the airports, because those kind of attacks, unlike like what we saw in Boston and Garland, those attacks that could take out an aircraft uh, have the potential of radically changing our country, decimating an industry, of really changing the way we live. Uh, and we have seen through the intelligence uh, that we gather that remains a top priority. Uh, so in terms of my concerns, uh, those airports are still at the very top. Uh, these ISIS-related social media attacks also a worry, but they're not likely to change the nature of the country. Congressman Schiff, Congressman King, a very busy and troubling week on all these areas. Thank yeah. you both for joining us today, and we'll stay on Thanks, top Chris. of all these stories.